Hi everyone, my name is Joshua Nichols and I'm a neuroscience and biochemistry student who undertook a project which auspiciously conjoined my two majors, construction of vectors for differentiation of pluripotent stem cells into glia. First and foremost, the definitions required for an understanding of this topic will be given. Glial cells, or neuroglia, are non-neuronal cells found in both the central and peripheral nervous systems. Unlike nerve cells, they do not produce electrical impulses. Rather, they are a set of support cells that protect and supplement neuronal function. As an analogy, if neurons are the Beyoncé of the brain, then the glia are her entourage. Sure, Beyoncé is already fabulous as she is, but without the support of background singers, lighting and effects teams, and makeup artists, just to name a few, the final performance will be somewhat lacklustre. In the central nervous system, the following glial cells are found. Oligodendrocytes, which produce the myelin sheath to insulate the axon. Ependymal cells, which form the neuroepithelium of the brain's ventricular system and produce cerebrospinal fluid. Microglia, which are the resident macrophage cells and serve as the brain's immune system. And astrocytes, the focal cell in this study, which, among many other important functions, support the blood-brain barrier. In this project, I attempted to demonstrate that human pluripotent stem cells, a type of master cell, can be differentiated into astrocytes through gene cloning overexpression of two transcription factors, SOX9 and NFIB. So in essence, the goal of my project is twofold. One, I am to successfully clone transcription factors from one vector to another, which uses gene cloning technologies. And two, to use these artificial vectors to promote stem cells to differentiate into astrocytes. The impetus for this study was to generate human astrocytes that can be used for disease modelling, namely Alexander disease, a leukodystrophy disorder caused by glial fibrillary acidic protein, GFAP, gene mutations, which is behaviourally characterised by intellectual disability and spasticity. In Alexander disease, this compromised astrocytic function causes destruction of the myelin sheath that surrounds and insulate axons. It is histologically characterized by abnormal Rosenthal fiber protein deposits in astroglia. A 2018 study used human-induced pluripotent stem cells derived from an Alexander disease patient to show that GFAP mutations in astrocytes leads to impaired oligodendrocyte proliferation, the fundamental myelinating glial cell in the central nervous system. However, the methodologies used in my research project are not without their controversies. Stem cell research, gene cloning, and animal studies are hot button topics in science and ethics. For example, one potential limitation is that non-human animal models of Alexander disease, such as rodent models, do not sufficiently recapitulate dysfunctional myelination in humans. Therefore, therapeutic interventions following in vitro disease modeling is a potential use for human and not non-human animal stem cell proliferation technologies. Moreover, the use of human embryonic stem cells is indeed very controversial. Utilization of embryonic stem cells, the most common subtype of pluripotent stem cells, relies on the destruction of the pre-implantation stage embryo during fetal development. Fortunately, my project will use rodent stem cells, but nevertheless, the problem of rodent to human extrapolation, as mentioned previously, still exists. For this project, I originally planned on using restriction enzymes to cut the SOX9 and NFIB genes from one plasmid to another. However, there were no compatible restriction enzyme cutting sites in the multi-cloning site of the recipient plasmid, PES-TBM. Therefore, we decided to use an innovative technique to artificially design and insert compatible restriction sites, known as primers, into the backbone of the gene of interest. This technique is known as PCR cloning. So far, given the COVID-19 restrictions, I have managed to complete the following protocols necessary for astrocyte differentiation. I inoculated E. coli colonies containing the genes of interest for 24 to 48 hours to achieve sufficient bacterial growth. 
I perform centrifugation, cell lysis, and purification to extract the DNA from the colonies. Then I perform polymerase chain reaction with the primers specially designed by myself to both amplify the amount of DNA and to attach the primers to the backbone of my insert, allowing for compatible restriction enzyme digestion. Once this was performed, gel electrophoresis was undertaken to confirm or falsify successful PCR cloning. For one of my plasmas SOX9, I had successfully cloned in the primers into the DNA backbone. However, for NFIB, no band was seen, meaning that PCR cloning had not been successful. After modifying the annealing temperatures for PCR, we as a team managed to successfully insert the primers necessary for NFIB cloning. Once this was performed, the PCR product underwent a purification and gel cleanup to isolate just the DNA from the PCR constituents. All that was left after this stage was to digest the gene of interest out using two restriction enzymes, NHE1 and NOT1, and to paste or ligate these genes into the multiclonian site of the recipient plasmid, PESBTM. Once this is performed, I can confirm successful ligation and use these vectors to infect pluripotent stem cells into astroglia, which can then be used for disease modeling and other stem cell technologies. Unfortunately, this project was a bit too ambitious for a four week laboratory project, so I wasn't really able to undertake the exciting final components of this project. Given the success and enjoyment I had while undertaking this project, this is definitely a project I will resuscitate in the coming years for a doctorate or postgraduate project. This project so seamlessly combined my two majors, neuroscience and biochemistry, that to not continue this work would be a real shame. The future of stem cell, gene cloning and neuromedicine seems rather bright since undertaking this project. This project uses a relatively novel transcription factor-based approach to stem cell proliferation. Compared to previous protocols, which may take months to develop, this project can achieve more efficient results in as little as 21 days. The therapeutic realization of such technologies is also exciting for future scientists, including myself. Disease modeling using artificially derived pathological human cells may allow us to study human diseases in vitro without relying on animal experimentations or post-bornum analysis. For next time, I'm Joshua Nichols and thanks for listening to my project.